years down here. And we'll <laughs> You're born in Indiana? Indiana. Yeah. Well, I was born in Chicago, but. Oh. Tape's rolling. Gene, I've already told you that both my husband and I were born in Indiana, and throughout the entire movie, A Christmas Story, we sat there nudging one another because, honestly, it was like reliving my childhood again. It, it <laughs> just, and, and yet, at the same time, I think that the movie is so relevant for all ages today. I, well, thank you. Uh, by the way, I've always felt that uh, people change very little. It's only the scenery around them that changes. Uh, I mean, I... I I believe that uh, Romeo and Juliet is still uh, still relevant. I know? sat there too, Jean. Did you laugh? Oh, I roared. I absolutely roared. Thank you. I sat there also wondering, um, you know, just uh, just what your expectations are as far as when the reviews come out. What do you think reviewers are going to say? God only knows. Uh, it depends a lot on the on the personal background of the reviewer. This is one of those films. It's like a litmus test. If if the kid had a happy ch if the if the reviewer had a happy childhood he'll love it, if the guy had a rotten childhood he's going ah bah humbug you know <laughs> yeah, it's it's genuinely an emotional film and I and I don't really know what the critics are going to say uh, I think the ultimate critics of a film though are the people who go to see it just buy a ticket and see it that's what I'm interested in I've never been interested in critics and uh, in my work. Uh, as a novelist and as an actor, I've never worried about the critics. I never have. Now, I know I should, but I, I find that critics often are very special people. They're people from the time they were little children who worked on the school paper, and, and uh, they never really lived the kind of lives that the average walking around person lives. That's and, very interesting. And they also usually have a kind of ego, you know. It's, it, it, it's, it's a real ego to sit back and watch a $7 million film that's taken people's lives like 20 years to do and say, ah, bah, walk out. <laughs> that's an ego. Are any of the incidents portrayed in the film from your own yes, childhood? Yes, I hate to say it, yes. Uh, that that incident of the BB gun is one of the few things that I can honestly say actually did happen to me in my writing. And, you know, my writing is usually uh, a combination of many things. As, a, as an artist, you know, you just pour things in your mind in. But that incident, that specific incident of the BB gun did occur to me. And I got a BB gun, and well, I don't have to tell you the rest. You saw it in the film, but that actually did happen to me, yes. That very, in that incident. <laughs> Uh, Peter Billingsley, I think, is an extraordinary actor. Was he always the first choice, or no. did you test lots of people? No. Uh, to be honest with you, we were more concerned with the father. The father, see, most people look at Peter, that's the whole thing. It isn't, not at all. The whole film would have fallen apart if we didn't have a father that really made that family come together and, and, and in a sense, hit you dramatically. It's an interesting family. The kid is really passive mostly. He just watches and listens. And uh, I guess the thing about Darren is he's so good, people just accept him. <laughs> he's the father, so no problem there. But that was the problem, casting. We went through dozens of actors. Every, uh, Almost every well-known actor in, in Hollywood wanted to do that part of that particular age group. They were all, uh, Matthau wanted to do it. But we didn't want this film to be Walter Matthauized. I like Matthau, but it would have become Walter Matthauized. See, so the reason that we picked Darren was a suggestion I had. I said to the to the people that were casting, I said, "Listen, this guy's a Chicago smart guy, who has lived on the south side of Chicago, and he's moved to Hammond for whatever work or home and for whatever work he's got. He has to do it. And the worst thing that's happened though is he's a, he's a, he's got married and has a kid, two kids. I said it's like Kolchak." And they said, let's get him. Remember Kolchak, <laughs> the Night Stalker? Well, that's, yes. that's Darren. Gene, it's just a delightful picture. And as I said, it brought back so many wonderful memories for me. Uh, and you. I just hope that everybody watching goes to see it and enjoys it as much as I and did. And don't forget one thing. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Gene, nice meeting you. Bad doggies. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know me? Okay, tape's rolling now. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and questions, sound. Are any of the incidents in this movie autobiographical? 
I hate to admit it, yes. Absolutely. I had a BB gun okay. and I... <laughs> uh, using up tape, all right. Okay. Was Peter the first choice or did you test lots of people for the role? Um, did you long for an air rifle when you were a kid? Okay. Right. What kinds of reviews do you anticipate getting for this film? Are you interested in what critics say about your works? That should do it. Mm -hmm. 